for those of, for those of you who are for those of you who are into construction or who are into bidding for contracts and stuff you know how this works in order to get a contract from any one of the ministry you literally have to decide that you're going to give half of your profit to somebody in the ministry or two or three or you and you and the tender board somebody on the tender board somebody in the ministry the person will do all the work to get a contract so that's how it that's how Guyanese work right now President David Granger is already on record saying that the report of the Commission of Inquiry into the murders of eight minors at Lindo Creek in 2008 raises troubling questions about the roles of the police and the defense forces at the time of the killings. A commission of inquiry was established by the David Grange administration to inquire into the circumstances surrounding the killings of the men. They were murdered by government officers in uniform. And Mr. Granger and the Commission of Inquiry are as a pack of jackasses. All of you are a pack of lying, corrupt jackasses. Live the lavish life. Them engineers just live the best life. You hear? That the strip club, they spend thousands of dollars to buy bottles and them kind of thing because, you know, they're making the money because they're getting the drawback. They're getting millions and millions of drawback from all these contracts. I contacted COI Chairman Justice Donald Trotman and he told Nightly News that based on his conclusion, if the miners at Lindo Creek were executed, the deed was more likely done by the joint services. The son or nephew or son and nephew of Mr. Rokium and all the other miners that were there, they were killed by men in uniform. And those same men in uniform steal the fucking gold. Dax Rukium, his brother Cedric, and workers Compton Spears, Horace Drakes, Clifton Wong, Lancelot Lee, Bonnie Harry, and Nigel Torres. Travis Chase, HGP Nightly News. Then I could only imagine what the CEO of the tender board is getting in drawbacks. So to say that, oh, I don't understand how he get almost five hundred million dollars to buy two property within three years, yeah. 20, 20, 21, 22, 23. Like, you know, I should even ask me get the money from because it's doable. It's actually doable. And if you notice with Guyana now, every single thing is about infrastructure. Everything is building a school, building a bridge, building a dam, building a house, building a housing scheme. That Luzik Nan, there were no survivors to identify them. It happened at Bartica, there were no survivors to identify them. And at Lindo Creek, there were no survivors to identify them either. And that's the way they keep you know, a secret to themselves. So, uh, let's say they were indeed soldiers there. These soldiers, I might understand from the theory that the soldiers would physically eliminate all these people because they don't want to be identified. The child said, the men who came into the house and killed the family, they wore shine shoe. But the Guyana government, the PPPC government has been painting a large narrative that the fine man and the fine man gang kill these people by crossing over creek and dam of mud. <laughs> In the rainy season. <laughs> and enter the house. But there is no mud footprint and mud footsteps in the houses. But you still didn't get your ticket? This flight takes off every single day. Tap that subscription button. Thanks. Well, I will tag Rickford Bork, but I want y'all guys to follow up with Rickford Bork. And tell Rickford Bork, I said, to try to gather information about a child witness in the Luziknan massacre. The Luziknan massacre had a child witness, a little boy who witnessed the men came into the house and committed the murders. And everybody like I don't know if people 
mind not focus the hear is don't hear right they don't process information right but listen to me very carefully the child witness said the men who came into the houses in Luziknan and killed his family they wore shine shoes the child witness the information the child presented in a statement Mr. Rickford Bork, Mr. Mark, Mr. Mark Benchcop, Mel, Mel, all these people, they all share this video to them, tag them, and tell them. Find out where that child is now. Who is this child? Find this child. Mr. Bork, you have contacts in the Ghana Police Force, the senior authority. Find the statement. <laughs> Find the statement. The child said, the men who came into the house and killed the family, they wore shine shoe but the guyana government the pppc government has been painting a large narrative that is fine man and the fine man gang kill these people by crossing over creek and dam of mud <laughs> in the rainy season <laughs> and enter the house but there is no mud footprint and mud footsteps in the houses that these people were killed in. Come on, people. All these so-called journalists in Ghana tell themselves that they, 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 they export journalists and they do research. Right? Y'all check. And you'll see there is no muddy footprint no wet footsteps in these houses where these people were massacred so called massacred but the witness said the killers wore shine shoes if you're coming over creeks and dams and mud and slush and water in the rainy season you can't get all shine shoes then they said these criminals left that part of Bo the, the east coast of Borbees will commit some other crime and went till down at Lindo Creek. Y'all know what Lindo Creek then? Listen, I want to make the shot. One of the persons they killed, they killed, not fine man, young killed these people. One of the persons the government officers killed at Lindo Creek. Was the son and I think the nephew or the, and or the nephew of Mr. Ab Ab Gold Miner named Arokium. If you guys can, Rickford Bork, Mark Benson, all you guys, if you can contact Mr. Arokium, I have topographic map sheets. Mr. Arokium have topographic map sheets, and Mr. Arokium can verify by the use of maps trails roads creeks and rivers he can validate and verify it is literally virtually practically impossible for fine men to kill those miners at Lido creek and those fine man gang they were murdered by government officers in uniform and mr granger and the commission of inquiry has a pack of jackasses All of you are a pack of lying, corrupt jackasses. The simple topographic map with distances, access routes, placement and time, time of occurrence between activities verifies and validates that those Minors, the son or nephew or son and nephew of Mr. Rokium and all the other minors that were there, they were killed by many uniform. And those same many uniform steal the fucking gold. Now, Grant, you come and do inquiry and said this. Look, yeah, but. 
President David Granger is already on record saying that the report of the Commission of Inquiry into the murders of eight minors at Lindo Creek in 2008 raises troubling questions about the roles of the police and the defense forces at the time of the killings. A Commission of Inquiry was established by the David Grange administration to inquire into the circumstances surrounding the killings of the men and report its findings and recommendations to President Granger. I contacted COI Chairman Justice Donald Trotman and he told Nightly News that based on his conclusion, if the miners at Lindo Creek were executed, the deed was more likely done by the Joint Services and not the Fine Man Gang. Now, this man had been the Home Affairs Minister at the time of the killings of the miners. He was questioned on Tuesday about the massacre and he believes that the Fine Man Gang had been culpable. So what solely do you believe, in mm -hmm. conclusion, happened to the miners? I mean, they were killed and then they were burnt. I, I principally believe that the, uh, the Fine Man Gang uh, were worried about them being identified by miners, and they did like any other criminal would do. That's why some people walk with masks across their face. They don't want to be identified because they're from the village. Not losing none, they were no survivors to identify them. It happened at Bartica, there were no survivors to identify them. And at Lindo Creek, there were no survivors to identify them either. And that's the way they keep you know, a secret to themselves. So uh, let's say they were indeed soldiers there. These soldiers, I might understand from the theory, that the soldiers would physically eliminate all these people because they don't want to be identified by the uh, persons who they killed. The eight men were mining for diamonds at the location seen here when they were massacred. Burnt human bones and skulls had been discovered on June 21, 2008 and later confirmed to be those of Dax Arukian, his brother Cedric and workers Compton Spears, Horace Drakes, Clifton Wong, Lancelot Lee, Bonnie Harry and Nigel Torres. Travis Chase, HGP Nightly News. Shout out to Night Family. Welcome back to the flight. If this is your first time flying with us, do remember to hit that subscription on your way in, buddy. Stay up to date with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks. We're hearing about no wet mud and shine shoes. Something don't look right. Something don't sound right. No wet mud and shine shoes. So did they disguise themselves as the policing forces? Did they make sure that they dress as much as they can for look like the persons that are a part of the policing forces? Because we hear in this allegation from the speaker that look, they had shiny shoes. And to be honest with you, any person of a certain age and with a certain type of IQ, you already know that two things you could observe about a person, and that's going to tell you a lot about their line of employment and their daily activities. You look at their facial hair, their hairstyle, and their choice in shoes. Facial hair, hairstyle, and choice in shoes. That says a lot about the person's daily activity, line of employment. Allegedly, there's too many crimes for one team of people to commit. So, did they split up into two different teams or more than one team, allegedly? Or... Is this just something that was pinned on them? And then why would one want to pin it on them? And who are the people that are operating in such of a drastic way when it comes down to criminality in the country that they're willing to operate on a level allegedly just as dreadful as the fine man gang, allegedly. Now, if we contemplate on this, there's so many things going away with this and then there's so many things that if we think about it, the regular so-called criminal might use this as one of the as one of the escape things, as one of the things that's gonna 
as one of their escape tactics of one of as one of their tactics that they would now use to evade the law enforcement or to evade the policing forces this might be one of them too this might be one of them too right because we want to think about it is the policing forces that corrupt is the policing forces really that corrupt because a policing force is essential to every single country. Right now, the way how society is running, a policing force is essential. Policing forces is essential because there are bad actors in society that need some type of authority to make sure that things and persons remain safe. So when we contemplate on this, can we afford to have a policing force that is corrupt? We can't afford to have corruption of large scale in the policing forces. We cannot allow that because guess what we're going to have? We're going to have something that is not functioning well, but it's just there. It's kind of like, look, you think you got something that's working right, but really and truly you got something that ain't even working. Looking nice and right, but the car ain't got no engine in front of you. See, thing going away. Allegedly, was justice served? Were the right people really apprehended? Dead men tell no tales. Blackie, dead men tell no tales. Douglas, dead men tell no tales. Saturday Osa, dead men tell no tales. Crummy Wing, dead men tell no tales. Waddle, dead men tell no tales. Now if the law enforcing organizations allegedly are corrupted, allegedly, we can only expect that this might trickle down around society. We can only expect, allegedly, that most times you're going to see this in other fractions of society. Now, we know that when you look around Guyana, guess what? The government walking. The government got a lot of works going on all over the country. The government walking. The government got construction here, construction there, and everything is going up and around. New highways, we've seen it all over the place. And guess what? Guyanese are thankful for that. Guyanese are happy to see the new construction and the new infrastructure in the country. We are happy to know that we can drive on new roads and we can experience new homes and new experiences that are to come because of these infrastructural developments. But the thing is this, the thing is this, how much are we actually paying for these roads and for this infrastructure that we see? Are we paying a fair price? Are we being allegedly robbed, scammed? Let's hear directly from Melly Mel as she exposes the construction scam allegedly in Guyana. Was for those, of, for those of you who are for those of you who are into construction or who are into bidding for contracts and stuff you know how this works in order to get a contract from any one of the ministry you literally have to decide that you're going to give half of your profit to somebody in the ministry or two or three or you and you and the tender board somebody on the tender board somebody in the ministry the person will do all the work to get a contract so that's how it that's how Guyanese work right now you can't just walk in as a contractor. You, you can't be an honest, legit contract, contract, contractor company that is just looking to bid for contracts and expect that you're gonna get through. That's not how it works in the end. That's not how it's working right now. You need to have a contact in those ministries. You need to be able to sit down at the table, whether it's at one of them strip club or something, because you know the like them engineers sort of like just live the lavish life them engineers just live the best life you hear that the strip club they spend thousands of dollars to buy bottles and them kind of thing because you know they're making the money because they're getting the drawback they're getting millions and millions of drawback from all these contracts so if engineers and permanent secretaries for these ministries ceo for these ministries are getting millions and millions of dollars in drawback then i could only imagine what the ceo of the tender board is getting in drawbacks so to say that oh i don't understand how he get almost 500 million dollars to buy two property within three years yeah. 20 21 22 23 like you know 
I should even ask me get the money from because it's doable. It's actually doable. And if you notice with Guyana now, every single thing is about infrastructure. Everything is building a school, building a bridge, building a dam, building a house, building houses scheme, building bridges, building waterfalls, building cocoa. Everything is about infrastructure and everything, right? And everything is about you know building is about everything all the emphasis right now is placed on infrastructure and you know why all the emphasis is placed on infrastructure that is because that is where every single ministry whether you're talking about the ministry whether you're talking about the ministry of housing the ministry of education ministry of public works that is where all the ministry except for a few like sports youth and culture labor yeah, well, Health. What's that a drawback? What's that a drawback? I hear no, you. No, no, no. I'm saying, I'm talking about like building, like infrastructure drawback. But there are other drawbacks that the man look. Like I guess so much for listen. I guess so much a thing to explain to y'all talk. I can't even. I can't even begin to talk. I but want to tell y'all. I only ask him because I want. To, I want to, um. So so send in something as a contractor because I used to build blocks when I was small. And if they would take me they on, I don't mind the And that is why, and that is why, you see, what's happening again, it's happening. You see, when they build a road, after two mornings, the road raise up. They get some big hole in the roads. It's because the people that are actually building the roads are people that have, don't never even build a fence in their life, never even build a foul pen. You see, beauty salon, for, you see, um, cake shop. Juice man, the egg ball man, the ah. wig girl, every single body is getting a contract. Once you know somebody in government, once you're willing to pay bribery, once you're willing to pass half of your prop half of your profit, once you get some government, some cousin, some auntie, some uncle, somebody to have connect to one of the ministers, then that's how you're eligible to get a contract right now. You're not eligible to get a contract based on years of experience years of building experience because you're contracting you're contracting company or your contract of your contracting form has been in existence for a couple of years and you did this project and that project and you know your work speaks for itself that is not what's happening it's all that's happening is, all, is about family friends who get the link who willing to pay the most bribe and who willing to you know who's willing to go Go ahead with what these engineers and permanent secretaries and see you are asking for. I am working on a story right now. I won't call it ministry because I won't give the CEO a tip off. I won't call it ministry. I won't call who's the CEO. I say nothing because all, all the evidence I was able to gather and to get. And y'all know when I come in to give y'all a story, I just won't get all the evidence, the paper trail, a little recorded here and there. So that when they decide that they can sue Melly Mel for cyber crimes or cyber bullying, all the evidence is this because you can't sue me for cyber crimes if it's true. You can't sue me for defamation of character if it's true and if I have all the evidence, right? So, so that's how it's working right now in Ghana. So this watch my post, this read it, and they got to come into my inbox and say, you know, thank you for highlighting that. So they can't comment, they can't like. It's only a matter of time. If Facebook only put all who view me status, none of them would get knocked off. They can't even talk. They can't even talk. Imagine you're living in a country that you can't even whisper a word. You can't even say, well, yes, with this girl says truth. You can't even like it. They can't like anything on my page anybody that's working at any one of those ministries in government whether it's housing public works labor any of those ministries and I'm, I'm i made a post and i make posts about anything as it relates to uh corruptions and what's happening in these ministries and anything against the government if i make if i critique the government at all and they like it they share it they comment on it they're fired 100% wild crafted sea moss from nature by natives. Why pay more? This one is from Azadine Mohammed, right? This one's from Azadine Mohammed. 
he saw me and he, and he um, said, so gotta make a public apology, right? Within um, seven days, right? What I can tell you is, as the mommy, right? I don't care how much money you get, use not God. And if I did, no, you still gotta call me. You understand? God is life short. You're not gonna live for the next hundred years. You still have to die. Don't come and trust me again. Memories, life is memories. Now you do is building a little more than me. You're gonna live on the earth, build a little more than me.